The decision to end a pregnancy during the first three months belongs to the woman and her doctor, not the government. Thus, the anti-abortion laws of 46 states were rendered unconstitutional. Not the church, not the state, we will not desire our fate. Abortion means a baby dies, America. Wake up, America. Judgment from Almighty God is coming. Pregnancy is temporary. Abortion is forever. That's right. Abortion stops a beating heart. You can't heart. change your mind, you know. A regular day at the only abortion clinic in Mississippi. Let me give you some information. Would you like some information? Go ahead. Get out of the driveway. People are about babies. About abortion. I'd love to give you some information. It's a daily battle to function as a permanent rotation of anti abortion activists confront the women as they enter. I'm praying for you, darling. We'd love to help you. Every child is precious. You don't have to do this. We can help you. I don't see anyone come out smiling. <laughs> no. Dana Chisholm and Berkeley Ostrin say it's their duty to save babies. Your child is precious. Your child would like to live. Dana, what are you hoping for from these women when you say that? Oh, I've, I've helped a lot. I've helped them. But what are you hoping their reaction will I be? I would love they, they, would, they would see, they would come out. They, and that has happened. They've come out crying and we, we help them. Little hands, little feet, breaks your heart. So you carry Tiny this little... model of we have a 12 week old baby. I, can, I do sometimes and you know, I think that's uh, precipitated one of the saves of the babies. The women look at this and this is a real baby to them. That's what I try to, we, we both try to make them realize this is a real baby. It's not just a blob of tissue. It has a beating heart. It has fingers and toes. You know, it's a real baby. It's just not ready to come out yet, but it's still a real baby. It's still a person. Up to 40 women come here every day. Some are teenagers from the poorest parts of the state. Others are working women with families. What they all have in common is that none of them want to be here. Shonda's baby at 12 weeks and six days. Off camera, her eyes overflow with tears. This 19-year-old is about to have an abortion. She says she has no choice because she was raped. 41-year-old Esther Nika already has four children. She says she and her husband simply can't afford another. It was one of the hardest decisions of my life to end the pregnancy. That, um, that I'm, I just can't do right now. I'm not in a position to do it mentally, financially. She says the scene that greeted her outside was a shock. They're out there telling us that we're gonna go to hell. They, they have pictures of fetuses and babies, you know, and I think that is way more disturbing than whatever they're trying to. How did that make you feel? It made me feel scared and, and um, I'm very uncomfortable. It's just disrespected more than anything. Security was very, very supportive, and especially as, um, with the protesters outside, just you know, reassuring you and basically defending all the young ladies that were getting out the car, defending you know their honor and their choice. I'm a clinic defender, and you can call me what you want, but you're not coming on this drive where you know. Outside, a team of escorts, mainly volunteers, are tasked with stopping the women being bombarded. It's a job they take very seriously. And this is David, a.k.a. Schwerner. He's uh, an activist, social justice activist, and he's a defender. And I'm just me, Michelle Cologne. So. But Michelle, is the, she's the leader of everybody. She really is. She just yeah. doesn't like She's mo it. modest, but she's the leader of all of us. Part of why, why I can say I come out here is... I don't. I, I would feel like the biggest hypocrite in the world telling a woman what to do with her body. Uh, yes, it takes two to make a baby, but at the end of the day, she's going to carry the baby. You know, she's going to be 
the way society uh, burdens her with a lot of the things with the, with the childbirth and everything. So it's not my decision. All they want to do is sit out here and judge them and tell them what terrible people they are. And ironically, hide behind their religion doing that. You know, if you look in the Bible, Jesus would not be out here judging and condemning these women for what they're doing. They don't know their personal decisions. They'll even, they'll even say, we don't know your personal life, but yet we're gonna sit out here and make these judgments on you. And that to me is just the height of absurdity. Or once you love that child, on the path of a church, we can help you love that baby. The women exit the clinic behind this blacked out fence. Getting them in and out is a very tricky operation. They're running a gauntlet. It's the escort's aim to get them through safely. And it's these protesters' aims to stop them from having an abortion. Ma'am, if there's anything I can do to help, please let us help. Adoption is an option. Doug, do you think that maybe you're making it more stressful for these women who are already experiencing a really challenging moment in their lives? I would prefer that I make it a little bit more challenge if I was making a very difficult decision, an important decision, a life-changing decision. But maybe they know that already. You know something? I do know that I don't have to tell them that in Mississippi, a majority, probably 80% of the people in Mississippi think abortion is wrong. I don't have to tell them that because they already know. Um, but, but some of them maybe don't think about the baby as being a boy or a girl a son that could grow up to be a carpenter or a they mechanic. They probably do, don't they? They're probably having all sorts of terrible I would, I would thoughts about the thing that they maybe feel needed. they have to do. I want them to think it through and make the right choice. How do you know they're not? I don't. But if you let me talk to them, I, I, I can make, you know, maybe draw that conclusion that they've really thought it through. But they built a barrier here that they don't, they feel like me offering adoption to them is there anything telling them that the adoption is an option that's free? That there's housing, there's a place up and locally here that for women that are over 18, that they can stay for free through the pregnancy because their boyfriend says, you have this baby, I'm kicking you out. Wouldn't that be, that, that pro board's not gonna tell them, the place in the clinic's not gonna tell them that. Excuse me. Ma'am, I'm praying for you. If there's anything we can do to help, please let us help. God is so good, he can uh, be our strength when we are weak. Let's talk on the way out. And once they get inside, that's a comforting period that we have to go through just to sell them down so that they can get through the process if that's what they want to do. Do you have any questions about the surgical abortion that you're going to choose? Okay. Betty Thompson is the chief counselor at the clinic. She says its survival has constantly been under threat. Your job is to use the breathing technique that we're about to give you now. You know, Since 1998 and this clinic open, every year there is three or four laws, significant laws, in the legislature that are chipping away at women's rights to have access. And they have no idea really what women really need. Uh, they get on this bandwagon and they decide for women what they should and should not do. And that is totally unfair. So we have had it rough trying to stay in compliance, trying to follow everything to the letter of the law. And we've been very successful at doing that, at following the law. The last law uh, that has really, that we sued about is the one where the doctors had to have admitting privileges at local area hospitals. I was very involved in that. We wrote all of the hospitals in the area asking for uh, our physicians to be able to admit patients. And there was a, there was a difficulty or a stumbling block at every hospital. And eventually they just said flat out no. Why? Because I think that they think that the public may not use their hospital if they are associated with us. Because they'd be seen as endorsing. Yes, they would be seen as endorsing the procedure. The need that women have for this health service is not going to go away. The clinic is struggling to stay open amid sweeping measures to restrict abortion across the US. Ultrasound technician Stephanie Battle says she believes if they are shut down, women will resort to desperate measures. They will drink bleach, turpentine, anything that they think that will make them have an abortion, fall down some steps, let somebody kick them, and probably go back to the clothes hanger. I ain't no telling. But it's, it's just so rough out here to where that 
that they would go to the extreme to have this procedure done because when they come in here and they say that they need this done, they mean it by all means. In the past, doctors have been threatened. It isn't always easy working here. Do you feel intimidated? No, not at all. Do they try and intimidate you? Yes, they do, but I don't. I don't pay them no attention. What do they do? Um, they yell out, tell me I shouldn't work there. Um, when I was pregnant, they told me that I shouldn't take my baby in a clinic like that. My baby's going to be evil, stuff like that. And I'm like, y'all, Christian, why are you telling me that my baby's going to be evil because I'm pregnant and I'm working inside of this clinic? So I was like, you're not going to pay my bills, so you don't have no say-so to me. I'm grown just like you're grown. You have your opinion, I have mine. Outside, the standoff continues. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Their approaches couldn't be more different. God, I pray they would know that their baby has ten fingers and ten toes and a heartbeat and brain waves. Dear God, I pray that they would turn to you, Lord. Father, I just pray you'd bless them. I know that women come here for anxiety and fear and, and Lord, just other reasons. I pray they would, Lord, I pray you'd turn their heart to their baby. The escorts use loud music to drown out the activists. The clinic's future now lies in the hands of the law. The team behind it insist they won't leave quietly. Amanda Walker, Sky News, Jackson, Mississippi.